we really want to talk about what makes pinwheels different than other programs. And there are a lot of programs out there. There are reading programs, handwriting programs, grammar programs, all kinds of programs. You might have been told from a friend or a neighbor about a program that worked great for their kid, uh, but then you tried it and it didn't work for yours. Or you were warned away from a certain program because it did or didn't do something. Uh, so where does Pinwheels fit into that mess? Yeah. So a lot of programs teach reading. And reading. And so do we. And yes. We'll get there. Don't worry. <laughs> Um, reading is, of course, a very, very important skill, right? And a huge part of the big umbrella of literacy. But reading is only part of that big umbrella. Um, one of the biggest things that makes Pinwheels different from many other programs out there is that we teach reading and writing together. These two skills are interwoven processes. They develop support and enhance each other. Working on reading skills helps inform our writing skills and even more dramatically, working on writing skills helps advance our reading skills. So they work woven together, like I said. We have to then think about them as kind of two sides of the same coin or rather two trunks of the same tree because that is how they work. But, and here's the catch, reading and writing are not simple skills. Um, we don't magically acquire them overnight. And that's a big difference with pinwheels. We don't want you to have the wrong expectations. We know that can sound a little weird uh, and maybe a little disheartening, but it is so important to understand that reading and writing take time. Learning to read and learning to write are incredibly complex. We have to give our kids time, space, support, and explicit instruction so that they can grow and keep on growing. Yeah, so what does explicit instruction look like? Well, in pinwheels, it looks like this. Just a second. Oh, looks like this, a big old tree <laughs> and a tangle of roots. Um, if you are familiar with rooted in language, then you might know this image um, as part of, or, or rather as our logo. Um, it's big tree, full canopy, four trunks, and a mess of roots. Um, and we made this our logo, not just because it looks cool, which side note it does. Oh, thanks, Claire. <laughs> um, but also because this is what we refer to as the language tree. Um, and I'm going to give kind of a brief, or we're going to give kind of a brief talk through of what this means and how it relates to pinwheels, but you can also um, kind of read more about this concept. Uh, we have a free download on our website in the free download section of our shop that is all about the language tree of talking through um, its different sections. So uh, speaking of the different sections, if you look at the top part of the tree, the canopy, uh, it's made up of the highest literacy, liter literacy skills that we can wield. Uh, it's full of analysis and critical thinking. There are literary devices, basically understanding the depth and breadth of literature. The, these are the things that we want all children and adults to understand and use because these are what make reading and writing fun. But to get to the canopy, we have to climb the trunks. There. The trunks are the four areas of language, listening, reading, writing, and speaking. All four of these areas fuel literacy and communication. Um, you can see that they come from the roots at the bottom and go up into the canopy at the top. If one of these uh, trunks is weaker or less developed, then there's a risk that the whole tree doesn't grow as tall or as strong. Um, but if we can help all four of them grow together, then you end up with this you know, towering, beautiful, uh, epic tree. So then under the trunks, dug deep into the soil, are the roots. And the roots are individual skill areas that include phonics, mechanics, spelling, word study, grammar, handwriting, and vocabulary. Um, these are all places where students have to build up knowledge through explicit instruction. 
and Pinwheels provides those instructions. We walk you through lessons in all of those areas in all of Pinwheels, but it doesn't stop there. Students have to practice and build knowledge in those individual skill areas. Uh, they also have to apply that knowledge to their reading and writing. Literacy requires consolidating a lot of individual skills, and Pinwheels does that too. That means that lessons don't happen in isolation. Everything is put into practice and into context. Yeah, so if you're learning a new skill, you practice it um, you know, right then when you're learning it in that explicit lesson, but then you practice and apply it maybe in a story. I happen to have right, a reader that so you've got some reading practice and contextualized practice with that skill. Or maybe you have writing going on uh, in the workbook um, or in the spelling you know, practice where you're using that new spelling pattern. You might also be practicing that new skill in a game or a physical activity. Any number of things that are currently <laughs> taped to the wall behind me. Um, but basically something that uses manipulatives, that uses uh, this multimodal learning style. Um, so that those individual lessons that maybe start out as something small or something that feels like it's in isolation is suddenly brought into the wider context across this whole tree. So a lot of parents come to us having bought a reading program and a writing program and a grammar program and a handwriting program. That's a lot of programs to juggle, especially when your child is just starting their literacy journey or needs some extra support in their early learning. That's what makes Pinwheels different. It's all those programs in one program. With a, yeah, it's big. <laughs> With a few more things thrown in, it's all the roots of the tree building into all the trunks of the tree growing into the whole canopy. It's the strongest literacy foundation that you can build for your child because it's literacy instruction from all the areas of language arts. The trade-off is I'm exactly what I said, that it's big. It's big. <laughs> you can't get all of those things in something that is really small or very... Um, if, if you do, you're skipping. Yeah, exactly. If it's, if it's something really small or very, very simple, you're probably missing one or two or three or 12 or a bunch of those pieces. So that is our trade-off, right? Size and the level of complexity of what we're providing you. But... We're here to tell you that worth it, it. it's worth it. It requires rolling up your sleeves as the educator, right? getting deeply involved in your child's learning. But what we promise is that we help you every step of the way. That is built into the way we've designed and written pinwheels. And we're so excited for you to start or continue right that pinwheels journey. If you wanna know more about pinwheels, um, check out the sample units on our website. So go to rootedinlanguage.com forward slash shop. And um, there you'll click on pinwheels and that'll take you to a page that will give you more information. It'll show you pictures from inside the program, all the various aspects of the program. Uh, and there's also some sample units that you can download and really dig into to see how our approach works. Yeah, so we really wanted to take the time to tell you kind of what sets our program apart from other things you might find out there. And I know that there's a lot of information, there's a lot of stuff that you can sift through and a lot of different you know, places you can read, um, you know, different programs that you can find, um, which is why we try to be very clear about all of the things that you get with Pinwheels. 